Next, we have uh, Felix Clement from University of Illinois. Um, he will obviously be talking about um, uh, hypergraph Thron theory. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so shall I already start or? Because uh, I was, I was, I thought it starts at uh, 25. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I got the time wrong. Of course, take your time to prepare. I uh, know I'm already ready. I can start. You let me know. I was just check, double checking with you. Well, yeah, some people might not arrive um, early, so we want them to catch everything. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry, I, I do think that you have the time right, Dorian. Okay, then I guess I can just start if that's fine with you. Okay, um, well, I will be talking about joint work with my advisor, Yoshi Balok and uh, Bernard Lidicke. And uh, we're gonna be considering point sets in the plane. Here you can see a point sets. We have N points and during my talk, the letter N will always correspond to the number of points in the plane. And now when you look at here, these three points, they form a triangle. So these three points are not in a line. That's the reason why they form a triangle. And uh, I'm going to be interested in very particular triangles. Um, I say that uh, two triangles, T and T prime, are epsilon similar to each other if the angles differ by at most epsilon. So you probably know what similar triangles are. That's if the angles are the same. And epsilon seems uh, similar, they are if the angles differ by at most epsilon. And the question I would like to ask is the following. So we have endpoints and, and we have a given triangle, say maybe your favorite triangle is the equilateral triangle and we take this one. And the question I would like to ask, how can you arrange the points in the plane such that you maximize um, the number of triangles being epsilon similar to the given one? So in other words, uh, what's the maximum number of triangles in a planar point set of size n uh, that are epsilon similar to a given triangle? So this question depends on three parameters. It depends on the number of points you're using, and it depends on the given triangle shape. So for the equilateral triangle and the isosceles uh, right triangle, it's a different question, and it also uh, depends on epsilon. And this is a question which wasn't asked by myself. It was a question which was asked by Barani and Fridi. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, lower bound construction. That's a, that's a construction here by Barani and Fridi. So say we have given, say we have given triangle. All right, it's not working. No, say we have a given triangle shape. Maybe, maybe that's our triangle over here. So that's T. And we now want to arrange the points in the plane to, to maximize. The triangles which are similar to that one. And what we do is we, we place this triangle over here and then we split up our endpoints into three groups and scatter the points around the uh, vertices uh, of the uh, given triangle. So we have here say A many, we have over here say B many, and here we have C many points. And then uh, A plus B plus C needs to be N. And, now we, uh, and as long as the points are just close enough to the, vertices, uh, to, to the vertices of the triangle, we will guarantee that whenever you take a point here and you take a point here and you take a point over here, that such a triple will form a triangle being epsilon similar to the given one. And now we can do even a little bit better. We can, each group, we can split up into three groups again. We're doing it here, here, here. We place the triangle again and now we scale the points around the vertices again. And this will give you an iterated construction. So in each of the blobs, you can split them up into three groups and do the same thing. And then you go inside one of the groups and splitting up, splitting up uh, into three groups. Again, you can keep doing that. And now we can count how many triangles are there inside, uh, are there here, which are epsilon similar to the given one. And that's counted by this formula here. Say we call that quantity G of N. So how many do we have? We have certainly A times B times C for all of, uh, for all of those triangles. And then inside, inside over here, we have G of A, inside over here, we have G of B, and inside over here, we have G of C. And let me just take the maximum over all ways of splitting up N into uh, three class sizes. 
And this maximum is actually obtained when the class sizes have the same size. So we want A, B, and C roughly to be N over three, and then that's best possible. Okay, and we want to solve this recursion. So we also need an recursion start. And well, if you have zero, one, or two points, you're not gonna get any triangles, so that number is gonna be zero. And uh, if you know how to solve these recursions, then you can go ahead and uh, solve them here, or we did that for you. And it turns out that this quantity is roughly one quarter of n choose three. And n choose three is exactly the number of triples in the plane. So this would, um, uh, this would mean we have one, uh, a quarter a fraction of all triples are epsilon similar triangles to the given width. And if n is a power of three, you can actually calculate that function exactly. All right, so now we have a lower bound for our quantity of interest. Um, and Barani and Fruity, they also proved upper bounds. And notice here that this lower bound worked for any triangle shape. We just would have arranged the point sets slightly shifted. Okay, and in terms of upper bounds, they proved if we have the equilateral triangle, um, then this lower bound construction is actually the right answer. So here that the quantity of interest is exactly that lower bound. And that's, that's true as long as you choose T to be the equilateral triangle and as long as your epsilon is small enough. And here small enough is less than one degree. Okay, if you don't know what an equilateral triangle is, then I can help you out. Actually, my advisor can help you out. He's here, that's a picture of him from 1986. He was taking part in a Hungarian game show. And as you can see, he found the equilateral triangle. So I assume he got the full points on that question there. All right. But uh, now let's come, let's come back to the math. Um, so now we have, we, have, um, we have seen that for the equilateral triangle, we know the exact answer, but it turns out there are some triangle shapes, like for example, the right isosceles triangle, where you can do better than the, this lower bound I just showed you. What can you do for the right isosceles triangles? You can, uh, you can take a square and mark the midpoint, and then you split up your endpoints into five groups around the endpoints of the square and in the middle, and you scale the points there. And then you do the same thing again, you split up each group into five groups and arrange them in the same way. So similar as before, and this will give you an iterated construction. And then you can keep going inside one of these blobs and keep doing this over and over. And here I already calculated for you how many epsilon similar triangles you will get. And here the answer is you will get 0.414 and choose three. And remember previously we only had one quarter. So here there's significantly more um, because the reason for this is that we have more symmetry or well, the symmetry helps us here more than in the other case, I guess. Um, uh, and by running through it, they even found more triangle shapes uh, where, the, where you can find better lower bounds. But yet they believe that for most triangle shapes, the answer should actually be that G of N. And that is captured in the following result. They prove that for almost every triangle shape T, as long as your epsilon is small enough, then the number of epsilon, the maximum number of epsilon similar triangles similar to that given one in an n point, uh, point set is very close to the one quarter. So here we have a little bit more than a quarter, so it's not quite it, but it indicates that maybe the right answer for almost all every triangle is actually one quarter. And um, our contribution is that we prove the one quarter. So our result is that um, for almost every triangle shape T, as long as you have epsilon small enough, uh, the uh, maximum number of epsilon similar triangles uh, to that given one in an N point set is exactly coming from that lower bound construction. And we also have an exact result when N is a power of three, but uh, I left that, left that out over here. Okay, now I want to give you an indication how you can prove these types of results. And I will prove, uh, I, will, I will start by taking a look at uh, Bavarian free results and then tell you what you have to change to, to get the one quarter. Okay, and therefore uh, we will now, we will come to hypergraph two and problems. And what we're gonna do is we will, we have a point set. Maybe it's that one over here. That's our point set. Say we have a given triangle shape T and we have some epsilon. And what we're gonna do is we will translate this into an auxiliary hypergraph. And I call it, to be precise, it's gonna be a Srinu from hypergraph. And uh, I'm gonna call it G of 
PT of epsilon because that's the parameters it will depend on. And the vertex set of this auxiliary hypergraph is just the point set. And uh, the edge set of this auxiliary hypergraph is exactly all triples which form an epsilon similar triangle to T. So this means this auxiliary hypergraph depends on the point set, it depends on the triangle shape given, and it depends on the epsilon. And every epsilon similar triangle becomes an edge. So this means we now can focus only on counting edges in hypergraph instead of counting triangles. And um, the next observation is that it seems unlikely that this, in this auxiliary hypergraph you can have large cliques. And the reason for this is if you have large cliques, that will mean you have many points where every triple is an epsilon similar triangle, but you can start arranging them and we'll soon see that you cannot do it if the clique is too large. And this will uh, get us to uh, hypergraph two and um, theory. We saw it in the last talk, uh, what, what, uh, what two and problems are. And here it's gonna be similar just for speed from hypergraphs. So the, the two and number, of a family of stream hypergraphs um, is the maximum number of edges a hypergraph and vertices can have without containing any of the uh, hypergraphs in, uh, in that given list. And now uh, what we have to do is we have to figure out, we have to take a look at our auxiliary hypergraph and we have to figure out what are the forbidden hypergraphs which cannot appear. And then we can uh, find an upper bound on the corresponding to a number to get uh, an upper bound on our problem. And that's what Bavarian theory did. So the, uh, the maximum number of epsilon similar triangles to a, to a given triangle T and an endpoint set is exactly the number of edges in the auxiliary hypergraph. And then they, they have observed that this auxiliary hypergraph cannot contain any of these hypergraphs here. We're not going to uh, define them. Um, they are all hypergraphs on four to seven vertices. Um, you might recognize some of them. For example, the first one is the hypergraph on three edges with four vertices. Um, and this step is actually very tricky. So you have, this is lots of work included figuring out that these are actually, that these actually cannot appear. Um, and then the next step that it is, they found an upper bound on the corresponding to a number using the method of flag algebras. But the problem is that this method of flag algebras fails for iterated constructions. So if the conjecture extreme example is an iterated construction, then this method is not quite, uh, often doesn't do the trick. So you have to do something else. And um, that is what we did. To get our improvement, we, um, extended this list of hypergraphs and found more. And then we proved the exact two run result, which gave us the one quarter. And for this step, the trick we did was we didn't use that method of flag algebras. We actually used it, but we didn't use it directly. Um, we used it to prove a stability result. And using this stability result, we applied standard cleaning techniques um, to get the one quarter. So even though this proof looks like it's just three line, uh, every line is lots of work, um, but we won't have time to go into it. So I will uh, leave that for now. And that's all I wanted to say about um, the proof, but I have a few open problems left for you. And one of the open problems is motivated by my nephew. You can see him here. Well, what is he doing? He's playing with these triangular shaped magnets. Actually, that's not what he is doing. When you think about what is he actually doing, he is maximizing the number of epsilon similar triangles, but he's not doing it in a plane, he's doing it in R3. So motivated by him, I would like to ask the question, what happens if you consider R3 instead of the plane? Or what happens if you even consider RD instead of the plane? And we know that you can find better lower bound constructions, but our methods fail for the upper bound. So we don't quite know how to do that. So that's the first question I would like to ask. And um, a second question, which remains open, determine this quantity for all triangles, because our theorem only goes for, uh, for almost all triangle shapes. So there are some examples left um, we would still like to know the answer for. All right, that's it. Um, thank you for your attention. Let's go ahead and thank our speaker. Thank you very much.
Any questions? Um, I have a question. So the uh, you said that your upper bound techniques no longer work for um, three dimensions and higher dimensions. Is that because like the hypergraphs you're forbidding aren't can be constructed or something or? Um, uh, we are sure that there are hypergraphs which um, um, cannot arise, but it's very difficult to prove which ones they are. And the reason for this is, um, if you have, if you start um, finding a triangle, you start by placing down two points, and there's only finitely many choices to complete the triangle. Uh, say you want to get the equilateral triangle, you can only have two spots. But as, as when you work in R three, you suddenly have a whole circle of choices. And since our methods are very, uh, they, they they work by checking cases, you cannot do that anymore since now you have too many options of placing the next points. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, so I also see that there's a question in the chat, so maybe I just read it out and then answer it. Um, the question in the chat is, are there other triangle shapes that went above, uh, that when coming from triangulation of a polygon of a certain size, like the right triangle and the square? Uh, Um, yeah, can you can you explain? I don't understand. I actually don't understand your question. Um, what do you mean by triangulation of a polygon? I don't, I don't see how this is related. So uh, to answer your question, there are other triangle shapes which go above that lower bound I showed you. The one example was the white isosceles triangle. And then for example, you have um, actually every right angled uh, triangle goes above. You, you can find better constructions. I don't think I answered your question, but if you, maybe you can just explain it to me and then I would, uh, so I guess I need more input from you to answer your question properly. Nope. Well, are there um, any other questions or, or anything that anyone has? Okay, let's go ahead and thank our speaker again. Thank you very much, Felix.